Memphis too. So. Yeah. Hey, thanks for taking the time today. Wanted to talk to you about talk to you about Rentvine. Uh, what can you tell us about the product? It's describe the product kind of from the top so we know what we're looking at. Well, um, I guess I'll, I'll let me give you a little background on how we got here. Um, now, this is my third business in the property management industry, specifically in tech. I had an advertising company early on, and I still still own PMW, which is a, our website company. And over the years, we had a lot of people ask us to build a software because uh, the perception was that not a lot of people out there loved their software. And um, we were asked for probably more than six or seven years to to start to do that project before we finally decided that the time was right. And as you know, there's big competitors in the space and it takes a lot of resources to do what we wanted to do and to do it well. Um, but we do have a, a pretty good pedigree in the industry. My development team, I think, understands the property management industry better than any other development team, uh, especially my business partner, Jonathan Ewan. So finally, we decided to go ahead and pull the trigger on it about five or probably about five years ago, five and a half years ago. I told John that I was looking for a bigger challenge than PMW. And I said, hey, no offense. I love you, brother. Let's, you know, uh, either let's do it together or I'm going to go somewhere else and take, you know, try to find a bigger challenge. And he was like, let's go. It didn't take him a second to respond. And um, we consider doing other projects just because we know how hard and complicated uh, and time consuming this was going to be. At least we thought we did. It's actually 10 times harder than we thought it was going to be. Um, but we we initially started using just our PMW resources to, to start programming and, and researching the project. And after a few years, we uh, we did raise a few bucks to, to hire some some specific developers for RentVine. And that's when we kind of realized this is going to be a pretty big project, which is fine. Um, but our approach from the beginning is, and, and like I said, there were a number of reasons why people had asked us to do this. Um, I feel like some of our competitors maybe fall short on customer service, features. Um, but ultimately, I just didn't feel like they're was or is a product that the industry truly deserves. And that's our mantra is we're creating the, the, the property management software that the industry deserves. And when I, when I, what I mean by that is it's got the most talented developers. It's fast. It's on the latest technology. It has all the features and, and, a, and an open API that communicates with other software. And while we like to think that we can build all of the efficiency parts onto the accounting software. We know we're not going to be the best at all of them. And where we fail to be the best and somebody has someone else they want to use, uh, no matter what the category is, they can access the exact same data our customers can through the open API, consume it in another piece of software and send it back in. And we've had several integrations done that we didn't even know about them until after they were completed. And that's the way that um, the technology is supposed to work. And um, that's kind of our goal is to, you know, we're going to try to be the best at as much as we can, but where we fail to do that, we're going to give our, our, our customers the ability to integrate the software of their choice. And like, like I said, we have a ton of that going on already. So in a nutshell, we're trying to build the uh, software that we feel like the industry deserves. Love the origin story and the mission, which is great. So, yeah, obviously say software, that means a lot of things. But what I'm taking away is this is kind of meant to be the end-to-end -end core operating software that you run your property management business on. And then like you said, they can bring in other little spot. Uh, they can fill in other gaps when there's another specialized provider that does better. But really, is, is, am I correct that the goal is that this is for a property management company to really run their whole business on? Is that fair to say? Yeah, that's correct. And our customers currently, I've I've gone to their offices and seen it. They sit down uh, and their employees sit down and they they plug into Rentvine when as soon as they sit down and they don't leave until they don't turn it off until they go home. So every property manager has a regulatory requirement to do trust accounting. So that's the core piece of the business. And I think we do that better than anybody else. But then obviously the more efficiencies that you can strap onto that software screening and leasing and documents and maintenance and reporting and all that kind of stuff 
is extremely important. Um, but yes, this is absolutely their primary business tool. And John and I found out a long time ago that without that core piece, because we built PMW and we built Red Screener and we built other stuff. And while the adoption is nice enough to build a good business, it's never as much as it is if it's part of the if it's part of the core technology. Just as an example, you know, our PMW clients, you know, they love us. We have great customer support, but only about maybe 15% of them used Rent Screener. Well, the integrated screening in Rentvine, I mean, 85, 90% use, use our integrated product uh, just because it's a, just such a nice handoff from one section of the software to the other versus having to go and re-enter that information. So we knew that if we really wanted to be like hugely successful, we had to have the, these accounting software piece. So, so you, you and I spend all our time talking to property managers is what we do. And we know that there is a, a, a very large spectrum of uh, digitization and, and modern tool set that our clients are using all the way from uh, you might go visit a client and everyone's just got paper files everywhere still to this day, you know, running around photocopying leases. And then you've got other people that are literally just, you know, spending their time trying to build the ultimate tech stack. Um, I bring that up because, you know, if, if thinking about our audience, what are some of the tasks that you're seeing too many property managers either do manually that shouldn't be manual or it should be digital or, or two that they're struggling with because they can't get it from one piece of software to the other? What are the, some of the core business functions that you think Rentvine just absolutely makes their life easier on? Well, there's, there's obviously a lot of them. And like I said, back to the core foundation of, hey, if, if we're not the best at it, then feel free to use someone that is and have an integration. So just, I feel like just opening that up to, um, to allow them to, tra you know, they have to create all the data. Like I said, they have to have an accounting software platform. All their data is created, their tenants, owners, vendors, properties, everything they need, custom fields and histories and leases. And, and they don't want to recreate that in other systems. And there are some import tools and that kind of thing, but you're going to get some data loss. You're going to get some data corruption. The API is the way to do it. And so any, any time a property manager, and, and RenFi is not perfect, don't get me wrong. We don't have integrations with everybody's perfect software. Um, anytime you have to enter the information more than once, it's a waste of time. Um, I, now I realize that sometimes there's not a solution available for that, but the ultimate goal is that you create your data one time and it is your data. And that's another thing that we're pretty particular about is we don't feel like we own it. We feel like you own it and whatever you want to do with it, we're going to, we're going to facilitate it. And, and even if it's not our product, and that's also part of our pricing too, is we, you pay for the whole software, whether you use, whether you use all the pieces or not. Now, obviously there's additional charges for screening because we have third parties that we have to pay and there's some payment processing that we have to pay, but the efficiency portion of the software, the e-signature platform, the maintenance, the reporting, all that stuff is included and anything we build, our, our plan is to also include that just because we don't, we don't want to, to nickel and dime the, the customer every time we build a, a piece of efficiency software. We want this to be their core business system, whether they're using our version of it or not, whether the, of each of those efficiency products. Um, so I guess the, the really long answer to your question is that we just want to make sure the data flows freely. And I think that'll save people time no matter what stack they're using. And I've been doing this for 20 years. I mean, I started with rent clicks back in 2002 and everyone feels like technology is just overwhelmingly changing it so fast. And you know what, it is a much higher pace than, than a lot of other industries, but it's, it's not instant. You know, you have years sometimes or six months or, you know, three or four years to, to make integrations, do integrations, improve your processes, improve your technology stack. And it doesn't have to all take place overnight. I think there are some, there's sometimes a, a, a tendency to just try to make everything so perfectly integrated instead of just, you know, kind of testing it out as you go and, and gradually layering in the pieces that are really going to make a difference in your business rather than just trying to stack it all together. Um, I agree. So I, you know, as a, as a business owner for a long time, uh, I will say 
it's easy to be paralyzed. And as, as a person who sold to business owners, it's so easy to see how many people do get paralyzed by, okay, you can solve 90% of my problems, but these other 10% are just going to cause me to do nothing. And so therefore I'm going to have a hundred percent of my problems not solved. Right. I mean, I just, I know that's what it is. Like everyone wants everything to be perfect. Um, but if you can make a 90% switch in productivity or ease of use or effectiveness, I mean, that's a game changer. So I think that's a great point that you're making, Dave. And then, as you said, you can, you can kind of fill in those little gaps over time uh, and make that quantum leap. You said a few things I want to ask you about, Dave. Um, I think it's really interesting that you said, uh, we think you own, we think it's important that you own the data, not us. I mean, the fact that we even have to have that conversation shows us that that's not always the way it is. Um, and so why is that important to when you're talking to a business owner who's about to make a commitment to kind of run their business on a software? What are the advantages of making sure that your data can move freely and you can change and just not be locked into a contract that you can't get your data? Well, the most obvious reason is that if they're dissatisfied with us, they can take their data somewhere else easily. or And we can't charge them to use their data in a different software application or for whatever purpose they deem appropriate for their business. And, you know, I think that a lot of that goes along with tech companies have a tendency to try to build a data profile that they can then monetize. And, you know, we have a commitment to our customers that we're never going to interfere with the, our customers, the property manager, their customers are, you know, for our purposes are tenants or residents, vendors and owners. Those are not our relationships. And we take that very seriously. So we're not going to drop an ACH fee on, on our entire customer basis, tenant list. And because even though you know, they're the ones that are going to deal with those conversations, we're not going to try to monetize an insurance product without their, I mean, we may try to do some of that in the future at, with their permission and their, you know, probably their participation, but we don't own that relationship and we don't, and that, that relationship basically is the data. And so we don't feel like that's our property and um, any, any, any monetization of that data, I think should be a voluntary and cooperative effort with the customer and not forced upon them. And certainly not in a way that damages the relationship that they have with their customers and creates a service issue throughout their entire company. So I, I think that's the most important thing is that it is yours and we are not going to prohibit. I mean, obviously if somebody tries to do something destructive to the software or, or, or uh, you know, have intense harm, then we, we, you know, we may not allow an integration under those type of circumstances. But as long as it serves a business purpose for our customer, we don't feel like we have any right to keep that, that data hostage. Yeah, thanks for elab elaborating on that. Cause I think a lot of people I have not really thought about, do I own my data? Like, what can this, what can happen here? They, they you know, they're not thinking of the downsides of that. So it's, it's great that you guys have made that a, a mission. I think it's a great differentiator. Uh, I really want to hone in on this, you know, the doing the data entry one time. I don't, there's not a lot of people that I meet that love data entry, Dave, <laughs> and and people <laughs> that don't love data entry definitely don't like redundant data entry, right? And doing it over and over again. So, Correct. you know, I, I don't, I don't want to put words in your mouth, but the way that I interpret one of the values of, of Renvine is that it, it's like, even if you enter your data in our system, you've now got a global key. And we're going to help you map it to all the other software that you need to use or anytime you need to use it, right? If we don't do it, somebody else does it and we're going to do that. So basically like one of the value propositions is if you put your data in Renvine, then we're going to help you never have to re-enter that. We're going to automate a lot of the stuff that you do from that full life cycle of, you know, uh, uh, marketing a property to signing a lease, to screening the tenant, to getting them in, to renewals, to all the payments, you're essentially offering them kind of a, a one and done data entry. And then from there, you're making their life easier with no matter what tools they use and no matter how much their business changes over time. Is that a fair summation of that? It's close. Now, remember that the the API is what we build in order to facilitate that. Yeah. The other software company that's receiving the data from the customer um, needs to build that API. We're responsible for the API. Yeah. and the documentation and supporting the API. And they're responsible for making sure that they know how to program to the API in order to send the information back and forth. So just the way it works is our, our system is an API and we have our front end is React and, and 
what the customer accesses through our software is the exact same thing that any other software can access through the API. So basically every, 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 every item that's available to our customers through the software is available to another software through the API. So it makes it, and so that's just kind of the core foundation of how our software is built. And that also saves a ton of time on our end being a, you know, it's kind of a small company with a smaller, and, and with a smaller development team, we can't manage 300 integrations all the time. So it's kind of on the, the software company that's creating the integration to, to manage it. And obviously if there's a, a change to a, you know, to an endpoint or something like that, we'll, we'll help out with the documentation, figure that out. But um, ultimately it's on the, the other company to figure that out. Yeah, that's, and that's, that's fair. I, you know, I know you're trying to manage expectations there, but what I'm taking away from talking to you and my clients and looking in the, the product is the fact that you are so specialized and you're only working with property managers. Um, you, you already have a much smaller ecosystem of vendors that your clients want to integrate with it. Right. So, you, you know, m like en enough of your clients are going to want to integrate with lead simple, or they're going to want to integrate with tenant Turner. And so you can focus on those versus if you were just an average, we do business software, we're an accounting software for anybody, your optionality of how many APIs you would need to talk to would be millions, right? Or thousands at least. So I would say that what I've kind of learned is because you're so focused, it does narrow down the, the key ones. And what I've seen from your site when talking to clients is you are integrating with kind of the most common tools, like the 80% or the 20% that make up 80% of the needs. Would you say that's that's a, a good assessment? I would say that's I would say that's pretty accurate, yes. Yeah. And obviously, so you know, the kind of the way it works is our customer. Um, and usually we have to show them how to do this, but our customer can provision an API key for a software provider, and then they, they can go and build an integration to the software. So it's, it's, yeah. it's super easy for us. And once we teach them how to do it, they can, they can do that. So like I said, I've showed up at trade shows and, and I'll see someone be like, oh man, I know we need to work on that integration. Go, oh, don't worry. We already did it. So that was a, it was a real eye opener for me once we once yeah. I started seeing a lot of that happen. So it's, it's pretty nice. But, you know, I think that's kind of the, the, um, definition of, of creating a platform or a foundation is that everybody else is kind of rallying to integrate with it because they see people are using it. And so it doesn't have to be all on your programmer's shoulders out of your office, right? People know our clients are using this tool. And that's what I think is so great about specialized tools in, in an industry like property management is you're going to get prioritized with other people. Um, so that's just what I've seen, what I've heard from some clients. So wanted to expound on that. All right. So uh, you and I are both probably above average on the technology side. We can geek out about terms like APIs and all the acronyms. But thinking about our readers and viewers who, you know, are, are less technical and they're just trying to get they're just trying to get their tasks done. They're trying to lower costs. They're trying to make their employees lives better, which I think is a big thing you guys do. Um, and they're trying to reduce mistakes. So when I think through the life cycle of what a property management manager does for their tenants, uh, you know, marketing properties, leasing properties, collecting rent, accounting, maintenance requests. What are some of the the kind of your favorite business problems that you've seen your 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 clients use or, or fix or change and come back to you and say, this is so much better now that we're on the rent fine system? Uh, well, there's there's obviously a lot of things that go into that question. Um, and for time, I would say that the, the best thing that one of the best things that we do is the customization part. So I feel like a lot of our, our competitors and, in, and I, don't, I don't blame them because, you know, we'll build something for one customer and then another customer will come to us and be like, I don't want it that way. I want it the other way. <laughs> so either we have to be the judge and determine which way to do it, or we have a very large settings uh, area in our software that a lot of our competitors do not, where we can offer some customization. I mean, you can have custom fields on any object within the system, but we also allow custom owner statements and we allow custom management fees that you set up once. And then when you add a new property, you just hit a drop down instead of having to set it up every time like you do in most other systems. So there's a lot of, there's a lot of settings that people can do to run their business the way that they want to, rather than being forced into what in the industry is kind of called workarounds mm -hmm. to do the, to do business their way. And don't get me wrong. We have some workarounds too. We're not perfect. Um, 
we try to avoid them and we try to work through them once we see them. But ultimately we want, we do give them a lot of flexibility. We, you know, like custom statusing on work orders and leases and um, a lot of communication tools. Uh, there's, there's, there's a lot of software that, that people use that's, that, that is really efficient. But I think one of the best things is that they can, there's a lot more flexibility in the way that they want to structure how they run their business because everyone does it a little bit differently in, in, in this space. So. Well, you know, it's a great point, Dave. It, it, one of the reasons I think so many people end up resisting a system like yours is because they don't have to do a workaround if everything is in spreadsheets or manual. They, they can have everything exactly the way they want it, the way they've done it for 10 years, <laughs> but they don't always also realize the other trade-offs they're making, right? And so that's their, always their argument. So it's great that you've addressed that and you've gone in and said, you know, we have a thousand clients. They're going to run their business a thousand different ways, like in the cracks and the nuances. And so, um, and I have heard that and I've heard you talk about that. Uh, we had our trade shoe bo booth right next to each other a couple of weeks ago. And I listened in on some conversations, which was, which was great. And, uh, and I do love that because I know that's not only the business owner, but the employees that work for the business owners, they don't love change. They've made decisions over years or decades and they, they want to keep doing it. And what I'm kind of hearing is your software, you know, with the right setup is going to allow them to do business exactly the way they want to do it. Is that correct? That's, that's correct. Even, even like something as simple as like a rental application, which used to be a piece of paper that people would fill out. And for whatever reason, some people keep that. And most of our competitors have, this is the rental application. We have, okay, we'll build the, you know, we know that over years they've, the reason they put a lot of that info on there is because they've run into a problem with it before. And so we just give them the flexibility to exactly create their application instead of being stuck with, uh, now we have a template they can start with if they want to, but we can also allow them to customize stuff. We, they can customize what's required and what's not. Um, again, I think, and, and that takes time. It's not, uh, it's, it's kind of an attention to detail thing that takes effort and time from our dev staff. Um, but I, I think, I think it's ultimately worth it. All right. So I want to, I want to switch gears. Uh, did, doing my research, the thing that I was most excited about, or one of, one of the things I should say, because there were several, was this just idea of speed. So obviously we all know a, a business as it scales gets the same problem in, in different varieties, right? <laughs> New problems pop up, but often it's the same problem. But now what worked at a hundred doors, for example, or a hundred clients might not work at 500. So speed and consistency was something that I was thinking about preparing for this because um, like you just said, the, the application process, you know, if I'm renting 10, 20 properties, I'm only getting 30 or 40 applications, right? You, you add a zero behind those numbers and everything gets more complicated and everything mm -hmm. takes days to get done. So looking into um, like rent sign, your document center, I mean, so much of property management, when you really like zoom out and think about it is just agreements going back and forth and requests coming in and get out. And so it seems like as, as my business gets bigger, I can just, I can turn things that used to take days into minutes, right? And so, especially through the document process and the communication. So sell us on some of those features because I, I feel like that was really exciting when I heard about it. Well, obviously, um, the you know, and some of our competitors have this. I, I think ours is smoother, but obviously, your applications in itself is uh, in the old world is a mess. You know, you got papers all over the table and here's some ones that I might like. And obviously we give software to be able to do that. Um, but once you do approve someone, obviously all their information flows into the financial lease creation portion of the software. And then you create all the charges and, you know, what's going to happen over, you know, to facilitate the tenant paying their rent using the portals, that kind of thing. Um, with RentVine, so we the, the e-signature platform that we built is very similar to a DocuSign type product. However, we have all of those hot fields. So once you create the lease, the rent amount, the security deposit, the tenants' names, their pets, any other categories or hot fields that you add to that are automatically built into that document when it's sent out for signature. And at the property manager's discretion, as soon as that lease is created, they can open the portal. So, I mean, you can literally have a signed and funded lease in a matter of minutes, which is a process that used to take days. And even with some of the earlier softwares, uh, 
you know, hours or days at least, you know, cutting and pasting and scanning and emailing and, and all that stuff. That's, that's all gone. So, I mean, you're talking 15 to 20 minutes per, per lease that you can sign in work and then hours or days in actually getting the signed agreement and, and funded lease. So there's, it's just a tremendous amount of efficiency there. Like I said, other, other softwares do do that to a certain level. I think we do it really well. Um, but, but that's, that's kind of, I think that's the example that you're looking for there. It is. Yeah. And yeah, I mean, obviously, like I said, you know, you, you and I have the curse of knowledge. We know there are other softwares, but a lot of people just aren't even into that step yet, or they're not using those, those features, you know, cause they just don't quite understand the benefits of all of that. Um, and, and so I love the customization of this. My immediate thought is if I'm a prospect or if I'm thinking about this is like, oh my gosh, who's going to set all this up? <laughs> What's the implementation look like? What Walk me through what the process is. What support do you offer? Who's expected to do what? Because I bet you a lot of people, that if they're, if they're super excited about what they're hearing now, they're going to immediately be like, this is my biggest fear. So what does that look like? Because change, you know, is not something people take lightly. No, unfortunately, there's no easy button. If there was, we'd have like a million units by now already. I can promise you that. But um, we do understand that switching software is probably, there's no probably, it's the last thing anyone wants to do. We understand that we need to offer them something better than what they're currently on in order to do that. Um, and, and I think we do have a lot of things, like I said, the API, the, our customer support is fantastic. But ultimately, that that process is no is not a ton of fun. But we do make it as easy as we can. So um, all of the data we can we can turn into we can put into like an import tool, and we, we can get all of the data moved, you know, within a matter of minutes once they pull the trigger. Now, obviously, there's a ton of setup that goes in on the accounting and chart of accounts and, and how they want to do their management fees. Um, but we can, we, we do the vast majority of that. So I would say we probably do about 80 or 90% of the integration. We have an, we have 11 people in our onboarding team and we even take the final step of making sure that all the balance forwards from any previous system that you're on and all the charges are accurate and brought forward so that you have a clean, nice reconciliation going forward with RenFine. And we've learned that over time. I mean, the first couple of ones we did were a little clunkier, but we've, we've gotten pretty good at it. Um, so I would say, I, I would, I would tell the customer that um, if, if I tried to tell you it was fun, I'd be lying, but I can tell you that it's a lot more fun with us than it is with most other people. And we're going to, we're going to do the vast majority of the work uh, to get that, all that data moved and set up the, the correct way. Okay. So I'm, I'm guessing at this point, uh, you know, many, many, many clients, which I haven't actually, but I, I, I know enough of my clients are using Redvine to know that it's no small number, but you've been through that process a lot. So you're going to hold my hand. You're going to say, Hey, this is the information I need. I need from you. This is how long you should expect it to take. These are the steps and the milestones we're going to do. So you're going to kind of give me some confidence and a roadmap on changing my business. Cause I, I can't just leave on a Friday and be using a different system and coming on Monday and my whole business is different. Right. Yeah, that's true. Yeah. Um, you know, our customers have people they have to notify and owners and tenants that there's going to be a change and we have to move all the data and they want to make sure it's correct. So, but, but it takes about, it takes 30 to 60 days and we've done some right. emergency integrations and, in, you know, in 10, in 10 days before. So it's, it's possible to do a lot faster, but in order to kind of go through the correct process, you're looking at 30 to 60 days. Um, and like I said, it's not fun uh, because you're, you're even though the software is very powerful it is different and so you have to the, the stuff that you used to take you maybe 10 minutes to do is taking you 15 minutes to do the first one or two cycles and then you're going to start picking up those those efficiencies on month two three and you know it depends on the system you come from as well so there is a learning curve and it's uh it's never fun but i think we support our customer at least as well as anybody else does because we know we know that that's the major hang up. And that's what, that's what one of the things that when I kind of did my research for this and I asked people who's using Renvine, what are your thoughts? Um, I definitely did get, you know, a lot of feedback of like great customer service, like, you know, know those guys well, they know our business. So um, a lot of people have to chat everything in or they've got to fill up forms. And again, you know, no customer service is perfect, but um, I'm, I'm taking away that you've got, 
people that know the business and they can they can take phone calls and they can help them walk through everything. And if I'm stuck and I can't get a accounting done for the month, I can just call Renfi and you guys will help me get through it. Is that is that a, a good I, thing to support? Absolutely. You can talk I mean, you can talk to any of our customers. Our support is fast and 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 and, and it's fantastic. We have software Rentvine software experts that are going to walk them through stuff. And, you know, uh, we do have everything come in through email, but if it requires a phone call, we'll hop on the call right away. And, you know, it's kind of the reason for that is you don't want to, the call comes in, now two tickets are not getting worked on. So we just kind of bring them in, triage them. If it requires yeah. a call, we'll either reach out to a customer or set up a time to, to talk with the customer. Um, but we're known for our support at, at, at PMW. I was known for support with my previous company. Um, it's it's a non-starter for me to have bad support because I attend every single, almost every single trade show. And I've seen other vendors get beat up by their customers at trade shows. And I tell anyone that ever works here that, hey, I'm going to go to the trade show and I'm going to be the one that takes the heat if, uh, if, if it's not good. So as long as I'm traveling and meeting with customers, our support's going to be epic. And I don't see that stopping anytime soon. That's an amazing point. I love that story, Dave, uh, to the authors. Let's make sure we put that in the story because I love that. I mean, it is a really good point. I've seen that firsthand when I'm walking by other booths and yeah, people people have have a short patience level when they feel like their software company is not supporting them. <laughs> and I love that you, uh, as uh, one of the owners, is there, you know, literally like to hear that firsthand. I would I would use yeah. that to tell my team, don't ever, don't ever put me in that position, you know, because <laughs> nobody well, likes you know, I. I also like to send my other team members as much as possible because, you know, no offense to property managers, but they get frustrated dealing with tenants and owners in that relationship. Sometimes they're upset and sometimes they take it out on us. And, yeah. but it's a small, it's a very small percentage. And then when you go to a trade show, even though there might be one or two people that's not having a good week that doesn't like us for a few minutes, you go to a trade show and get hugs and thank yous and, and you guys have changed my life and all that stuff. That's fantastic. So I like to make sure that they get to, sharing that sometimes too, especially the support guys. And, and I like having them at trade shows anyway, because, uh, you know, if somebody wants to buy something, but it's an existing customer who wants, has a question, turn them over to support and then, you know, continue the conversation. So, All right. So we, we talked a lot about change, Dave, which I think is important. I mean, I think, you know, uh, change is going to be uh, something some readers will say it's time to do. And I just didn't know there was something else out there, but I also want to think about, this industry and how fast we're growing and all the new faces. You and I were at Florida NARPM two weeks ago and they had everybody raise their hand. That was the first time attending. I don't know if you're in the room, but it was like 30% of the room. And, you know, obviously uh, through our, 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 our kind of more exposure now with the magazine, we're just, it's amazing how many people we're calling and introducing ourselves to that are like, Oh, I'm, I'm at four doors. I'm at six doors. I started this year. And um, I think that's only going to continue because of a number of factors, which I think we all know between the market of residential real estate, the word is getting out, there's more franchises that are, are popping up. So for new owners of a property management company, is this something I can do day one when I'm just inheriting two of my own properties and I got my first client? Do I need to be at a certain door count? Do I need to have a certain support staff? Like when's a good time to start with Renfine if I'm just getting started in property management? You know, we'll take a company that has that that's a startup. We do have a hundred ninety nine dollar a month minimum, or maybe it's two forty nine. Can't remember. Sorry, I'll, one of those two. Yeah. Um, and uh, you know, a lot of our competitors, I think, have kind of priced their product in a way that discourages use by that mm -hmm. by that person. And you know what? Sometimes they're a lot of work, and sometimes they cancel because they go out of business. But I've also seen, uh, even in our short tenure, we've had. People start at zero that are in the one, two, 300 unit range now. And I'm willing to take the risk on, on some of, some of those startups that are going to eventually be the leaders of the industry in two, three, four, five, ten 10 years. And uh, I think they'll appreciate the fact that we were there for them when they were small. I've actually, I've, I've personally heard that comment. And like I said, we've seen just, you know, we've been out of beta for just under, you know, not even three years yet. And I've heard, you know, I've seen, I can see the unit counts and their growth and, and it's, it's awesome. And so a small customer is, is a lot of some, a support compared to a customer with hundreds or even thousands of units. But I think the risk is worth it because uh, those, those companies are going to grow into the next industry later. Uh, some of them will. So that's good to know uh, because I mean, if, 
a few hundred dollars is as a, as a new business, you spend hundreds of dollars on all kinds of things. But when you think about the actual operating system for your business and kind of like what you're going to be building it based on and making sure you've got the right records, um, it's good to know that there's not some giant unobtainable minimum fee of $5,000 or $10,000 to get started. So it really is uh, like a lot of software as a service is a, a very a, a approachable product at any size, right? That's correct. I, I, I think that our, our customers, and I, like I said, I've heard it personally and I've seen their comments that uh, I think they do appreciate that. And don't get me wrong. We have huge customers too. We have a third, you know, we have a 30,000 yeah. unit customer. We have a single, a single office that has 4,000 units. And, you know, we've got a, we've got very large customers as well. But, uh, you know, like I said, we, we kind of like to bet on the little guys and, and that they're going to eventually yeah. turn into big guys. Yeah, and I definitely didn't want to insinuate that you didn't have larger customers. I just wanted really to think about we 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 focus all the energy on on somebody changing, but I think a lot of people this they, this would just be the way they start their business, right? And they'd be starting really really cleverly from the beginning, so that they don't have that change problem that you talked about that nobody loves in the future. Um, yeah. So I just wanted to really encourage you know that in the conversation as well, because I just think there's more and more property managers popping up like crazy right now. So well, you see, sometimes you see that when the uh, sales market slows down. Um, but again, some of those new guys become some of the more seasoned veterans down the road. But yeah. um, the the industry is is changing, in that there seems to be more and more uh, there seems to be more and more interest in the industry from from the investor crowd to hire a manager rather than do it themselves. Agreed. Agreed. Okay. Um, so this is really helpful. I got my head wrapped around this. Um, I guess I want to open the floor to you. Is there any questions I didn't ask that you think I should, or anything we want to make sure we're sharing with the audience about the product? Um, you know, I would just say that our pedigree is property management. And that was my family business. And uh, so I was exposed to it as a kid. And uh, my first entrepreneurial venture was a, property management tech, you know, it's a company called rent clicks where we help people advertise their rentals. And I sold that uh, too early. And then I started PMW, the, you know, property manager websites with the same, same team. I'm working on the you know, same business partner. Uh, it is a separate team. Um, and, and that's the category leader for helping, you know, for property managers, helping them get new, get, in, get new clients and add more business, which is a perfect fit for us at RentFine because then we get to bill them for them the next month. So it's a win, win, win for everybody. Um, we just have the pedigree in the industry and we know what our customers want. And, you know, I'll, I'll admit that we're not totally there yet, but I, we, we will never stop improving our software and we're in it for the long haul and we're going to support it enthusiastically and, very shortly, it is going to be a product that if you want to keep up with your competitors, you're going to have to switch to. And I know that sounds really cocky and arrogant, but we've done it with a couple other businesses before. And we have the DNA and the pedigree to do it with this business as well. And we have the, the dedication and the resources. So we're going to we're going to build the product. And I've been telling them, you know, we've said the vision, we're communicating, we're, we're building the software that the property management industry deserves. And I don't think they have it yet. And uh, we're going to be the ones to do it. I love that. Thank you for giving that background about you too, Dave. Uh, you know, you kind of hinted at the beginning and now a little at the end, we'll put that together into a nice bio. So born, like kind of raised in a property management family, which was great. Multiple ventures. I, I see you all the time. You and I are in the conferences. We are surrounded by property managers. These are some, they become some of my best friends, ironically, over the years I've been in the industry. And so I do get it. You are out there and I know your team is at multiple companies meeting these people. And I, I think that's something to, to really highlight and focus on. I say all the time to some of my, my team members, when somebody's like, yeah, I just don't know if we want to make this investment, if we want to do this. Uh, and I say at the end of the day, there is, and this is a little self promo for me, there's no company spending as much time and money just thinking about how to grow property managers than we are. I mean, we are severe. That's all we do, right? And and some amazing things comes out of that focus, you know? And I'm hearing that from you too. It's like uh, Renvine is just totally maniacally focused on this one type of customer and what they want. 
And why wouldn't you want to choose someone who's so focused on exactly who you are? So I, I just think, you know, all things considered equal, I'd always bet on that person. That's correct. Yeah. I think you uh, summed that. I think you summed us up pretty well right there. Great. That's what we are. We're yeah. maniacally focused on doing and building the best product for, for our customers. That's fantastic. Okay. So high level stats, you said you've been out of beta for three years. It's actually 27 months. So uh, okay. April of 2021 is when we came out of beta. That's correct. I mean, we've been programming since 2000, late, late 2017, early 18. Okay. And, uh, you know, we had some beta customers probably about, you know, eight to 10, eight, eight months before that. Um, but that's when we kind of officially went live because we added a couple big customers and, and, and yeah. went live. So, so founded 2017, but out of beta in 2021, really publicly okay. available. Okay. Which okay. shows you the work that goes into this product. And it's four years. Uh, software is not easy. And like you said, it was 10 times harder than you thought it was, <laughs> was going to be. Yeah, and when we launched, we had one tenth the software that we have now. Yes. <laughs> so, um, so anytime my salespeople complain about not having enough features, I let them know that I had far fewer when we got the first few units. So. And uh, do you share anything about the size, client base? Uh, are you, are you yeah, only I mean, we are, you know, we have 55,000 live units now. And this today's, uh, what, September 19th of 23. And we should have very close to 100,000 by the end of the year. And we look to be, you know, we look to take a tremendous amount of market share from our competitors over the next few years. Great. That leads me to my last question, I think, because I always come up with more questions. But uh, three years from now, where, where are you going? What's the whatever you want to share? Like kind of what's the vision you guys are talking about uh, when you've you've doubled in age three years from now? Well, well, like I said, I've, I've already sold one business too early and I would have personally made uh, close to nine more figures had I stuck with it. So uh, um I know a good thing when I have it, and we have a really good thing here. I am in lockstep with my business partner, who's also our uh, he's, he's our lead developer and in charge of our, our development team. Um, and we've kind of decided that our, our ultimate goal would be that if and when the day comes that we're ready to step back, we have a, a great bench of leaders that we can turn the company over to uh, internally. So that's the ultimate exit for us. But, you know, there's other ways to do it. And, you know, we recently turned down a very nice uh, private equity deal because um, you know, we're just in it for the long haul. We're not we're not ready for uh, we're not ready to give up uh, any significant portion of the company at this point because we we know where it's going. I can well, tell you we'll get the we'll get the next fifty five thousand units a lot faster than we got the first fifty five. Yeah. We probably won't even take uh, the rest of the year. So <laughs> I was going to say, um, it's not, from my experience, it sounds like you're entering what I think is the really fun part of a startup where you kind of got your growth, you, know, you kind of got your eye, your nose bloodied and your eyes blackened and you're kind of past that. And now you're like leaning on what you actually know and the growth comes much faster, which is an exciting time. Yeah, sometimes it doesn't feel like that because it's pretty stressful, but it's this is what we asked for and, and it's what we got. So we're, you know, we're super excited and we have an incredible team and uh, here we come. So we're looking forward to, to making some noise. Yeah, it's an exciting time to be in the industry. I can say that. So, well, fantastic, Dave. Thanks so much. Uh, everyone obviously can go to rentvine.com. Uh, anything else? Any other uh, announcements or, or shares that you want to ask of the audience? Oh, that's it. We're, we'd love your business. Bring it on. We'll take good care of you. All right. Well, we'll see everybody at a future conference. Rentvine and Rentscale seem to end up next to each other. Maybe it's alphabetical. I don't know, but we always seem to. <laughs> to <each other>. Yeah, <laughs> that's fine. We'll have to squeeze you on the put you on the PMW side so you guys can chat over there. So. Yeah, exactly. Well, thanks for this, Dave. It's been great. Yeah, absolutely.